In today's video, I've decided to give Raymond, our cameraman and editor, a choice between the known and the unknown. So he chose that mystery box right there, and he doesn't know what's inside. Saying I chose this is kind of a strong statement. Well, well I mean, <laughs> you, just roll with it. Judging from the shape of the box, it feels like a motherboard, but I'm confused as to why that would be a video just by itself. Definitely not big enough to be a case. If it is the case, my mind is gonna be completely blown. So, yeah, I, I, I've got no real idea what we're walking into. Well then, let's open her up. Here we go. I tried to find Raymond some safety scissors, but my kids took them. All right, maybe we should have cut this first. This is the longest unboxing I've ever seen. You know what? <laughs> this is not my job normally, okay? All right. This tells me nothing yet. Oh God, this is a really tiny case. If it is the case, my mind is gonna be completely blown. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> Are you overwhelmed or what? <laughs> Alrighty, this is um, I think the tiniest Optiplex I've ever seen in my life. And we're gonna turn it into a gaming PC. Now I know what you're thinking, Greg, how could you possibly turn something this tiny into a full-fledged gaming PC? Well, my friends, a lot of what we're about to do in this video will make absolutely no financial sense. But we're gonna have some fun with this one. Are you ready? Stay with me. Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets are excellent substitutes for traditional thermal paste thanks to their graphene construction and extremely high thermal conductivity, making them more effective than traditional carbonate thermal pads. They're super easy to install, never dry out, and can be purchased in various sizes, ranging from 24 by 12 millimeters all the way up to 50 by 50. In theory, you never have to change one of these, making them peace of mind for servers, gaming PCs, and even high-end workstations. And best of all, no mess. Just keep in mind that these are electrically conductive so be sure to use them as directed. Check out Thermal Grizzly's cryo sheets via the links below for your CPU or GPU today. This here is a Dell Optiplex 5050. And I know what some of you are thinking, Greg, why are you bothering with this e-waste? Nobody needs to be buying something like this in 2024. First of all, it is way too crammed. It's way too hardware limited. It's also proprietary, which means you can't just pull this board out and use it anywhere else because of its weird shape. The power supply has too low a wattage to make sense. And the storage is, well, pretty bare bones as well. The CPU is a Core i7-6700K, good old Fashion Skylake four cores, eight threads, which would still be usable in today's day and age, but obviously on the lower end. It does have 16 gigs of DDR4, two eight gig sticks a piece. They are pretty basic, but at least we get two. And speaking of two, we only get two PCI slots. This is more like a, an ITX form factor. And those two slots are also smushed a bit, so you can't fit full-size graphics cards in here without using a Dremel or something crazy. And well, we have an issue with the two PCI slots in here as well. I am not sure why, but the designer of this board decided to put the large full-length PCIe slot here, full 16 lanes, below the upper slot. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well maybe it's because of this area here. They knew if you wanted to put an expandable card, it wouldn't fit. It actually will, a smaller, slimmer graphics card will fit in this uppermost slot, but we can't fit it below if it's gonna be two slots thick because we've got the power supply directly below it. That, um, that that's gonna be a problem. The CPU cooler is interesting as well. We're used to seeing like just cheap stock Intel coolers with top core i7s and these OEMs, which just breaks my heart. At least they made an attempt to do something a little different here, like a wind tunnel turbo style design. It's probably not the quietest, but at least it's something different. This power supply is, well, perfect for the setup as it is, but it leaves very, very little in the way of hardware expandability. Just a 180 watt total output unit. And we're definitely gonna have to do something about this if we wanna turn this into a gaming PC that of course you should never build because this is not gonna make any sense when it's all said and done. Now, because I'm sure you're dying to know, we only paid 150 USD on eBay for this machine and apparently it already has Windows 11 loaded onto the included 500 gig SSD. We're gonna test that right now. This will also give us a chance to see if the system even works as advertised. So uh, here goes nothing. Oh, all right, so it just turned on automatically. A lot of these tend to do that. I've got it plugged into the HDMI port now, and look at that. That's a post right away. It looks like it's loading into Windows as well. Wow, you know, I, I shouldn't really be surprised because it was advertised as working, but there's, it's always a, a nice, just, it's, it's, it's always a relief when something that you order secondhand on eBay actually works. So uh, we're good to go. This is a plug and play machine, great for office work and the like. For 150 bucks, honestly, this isn't bad at all. This I would not regard as e-waste one bit if used for the 
right things, right? If you have managed expectations. But uh, we're gonna go crazy in this video and we're gonna do things to this that I don't recommend you do because they make zero financial sense. Starting first with overhauling this power supply because we need some headroom for the other stuff we're gonna throw in here. So yes, our power supply is an unorthodox shape because of the size constraints of the case. I had to buy pretty much an exact replacement that was Dell manufactured because some of the connectors on this thing are proprietary. But the important thing about this one is that it's a 360 watt unit, which includes a dedicated PCI supplemental power cable. Ours is also 80 plus gold certified instead of 80 plus bronze, in case you were wondering. We're actually going to remove this SSD entirely. It's not going back in the rig for reasons we'll explain a bit later. I think this entire assembly here like swings, how does it swing? Like, oh yeah. Okay, so there's our uh, super thin optical drive. We're going to keep this. And now we just have to disconnect a bunch of cables, including this four pin near the CPU. We don't have a 24 pin on this motherboard. Just uh, a six pin. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So just the four pin for the CPU, the six pin for the motherboard, and that's that, that's all we have here. Yeah, Out she comes. There we go. And in goes our upgraded unit with the, uh, well, cables, we're gonna have to cut that zip tie there. Anyway, here she goes. And there's a little clip, yep. It holds it all in place and we can tighten it up from the rear. I suppose while we're in there, these were the original two eight gig sticks of DDR4 from SK Hynix. We're gonna upgrade these as well, although we can't go too high profile with the heat sinks because we just don't have room. How about 32 gigs of a team group DDR4? One and two, this should be plenty for modern gaming. This board also conveniently houses an M.2 slot, which we are definitely gonna take advantage of here. We're gonna upgrade storage to a one terabyte SN770 Black from Western Digital. And since we have the space now, why not throw in a three and a half inch hard disk drive along with that optical drive again. This is a two terabyte with actually my Steam library loaded onto it. This has gotta be one of the most compact builds I've ever worked with. And it's partly because of this power supply and just its form factor, its shape, it allows this case to be uh, much smaller, much thinner than your average. We just need one more component, that being our graphics card, and I think you know where this one's headed. I was about an NVIDIA RTX 4060, but this special one from Gigabyte is a slim model, which means, well, it fits in slim cases. Prepare yourselves. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it almost looks like a Wi-Fi adapter, but this little thing here packs a heck of a punch. It actually runs pretty quiet given how powerful it is. Yes, you get DLSS support, ray tracing support, all in a super tiny RTX 4060 package. And it comes with a second rear I.O. plate for slim cases. I know it's gonna be really cringy connecting this to that upper slot there, which uh, I think is actually just a four lane slot. I'd have to check, I, I think it's four lane, but uh, we'll find out the hard way here in a second. And to remove these two covers and then slot this card straight in with uh, a majority of its golden fingers just kind of chilling there, making no connection at all. And we have a single eight pin to worry about. Problem is we've only got a single six pin from our power supply, but I've got a solution for that. Raymond's face is, uh, well, I wish you could see it. It's, he's cringing a tad. Now this, yes, is a bit cringy on the surface, but when you think about what the differences actually are between uh, a six pin PCI cell phone power cable and an eight pin, we really just have two extra grounds that we can sort of kind of jump between each other, which is what I did here, and that's why it's wrapped in electrical tape to hide the ugliness that is underneath. This works. We've tested it in actually a few different builds, so it, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher on standby. This is gonna be super, super tight fitment, but I think we will just have it. Look at that. And then this other side here, which I'm sure is not in frame, uh, we can just connect to the power supply cable itself and tuck in right there. And there we go. It's, um, oh, it looks cool, sort of, kind of. It, it's nice and compact, which, I like, I like builds like that. When you don't have wasted space, it looks like everything was just used so efficiently. We've definitely maximized the volume of this chassis, but we haven't really maximized the performance of our 4060, which we're about to find out here in a second. So let's first power it on, make sure that it can do that, and then we will try uh, running it through some games. And remember to plug our HDMI cable into the graphics card this time around. I think it's gonna power on by itself again, if I'm not mistaken. No, it didn't that time. Interesting.
Oh, yeah, we're in 230 volts. It'd be great to change uh, that. Remote setting on that? Yeah, there's a little setting here. I, I don't know why, I immediately thought about that. Hopefully I didn't just nuke anything. Give this another go. Boots up right away now. Okay, close call there. Hoping for a post. I'm not sure if the drive I put in here already has Windows loaded on it, it may. We'll just allow it to kind of run through and, uh, and hopefully do something. You know, it might just be totally tr It got really loud for a second. It might just be totally tripping out that we put the graphics card in the upper slot. And if we're gonna have this issue, oh, thank you, I didn't, okay, whew. I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, it's just freaking out because we changed the memory of the rig. Obviously, we have the graphics card in now. I think it's going to reset once more. 12 o'clock midnight. Now, as you watch these benchmarks run through, I want you to keep in mind that our RTX 4060 is actually fitted to a four-lane PCIe slot. So uh, what we pointed to earlier, we verified was, in fact, a four-lane slot, which means our card is not going to be able to run at its full potential. In fact, this would be a very silly thing to do in the real world. So maybe don't copy this like at all, but just for giggles, we decided to test it anyway. And you can see in 3 Mark Time Spy, 1440p DX12 synthetic, things look pretty smooth. Playback is in the upper 60s FPS wise, and our overall score put us just over 40% of all submitted results. Our CPU is still obviously going to be the bottleneck here. Four cores is just barely gonna skate you by in 2024, but all in all, I'd say a fairly decent performance given the older platform in here. Moving on to GTA 5 and fast forward to the ground so you can see our frame rate is hovering around 100 fps which i think is fairly respectable in 1440p high settings across the board with no anti-aliasing our graphics card utilization is on the low side this i imagine is partly due to the fact that we're only running on four lanes but also due to the fact that this game is quite old by today's standards same goes for cp utilization all eight of our threads are chilling in the 60s to 70s on average all in all though i'd say this is very playable and if you wanted higher fps you could even drop the resolution to 1080p. Now onto our racing title, Dirt 5, practically the same settings, 1440p and the high preset. See our graphics card is going to be our bottleneck here, nine times out of 10, it's pegged around 95 to 100% utilization. Our CP though is still doing a bit of work. You'll notice our frequency is around 3400 megahertz and it's gonna stay that way throughout because we don't have an ability to overclock this SKU. Not that we would wanna overclock it anyway with the hardware in here. The cooler and the motherboard just aren't built for this kind of stuff. So we're not gonna be able to extract as much potential as you otherwise expect out of an older Core i7 like this. Still though, our frame rate is very healthy, mid to upper 80s on average, and uh, well, only using about seven and a half gigs of RAM at that, so we've got plenty of system RAM headroom as well. And lastly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I want you to remember that this 4060 does of course have DLSS support baked in, and for a title like this, we're gonna be able to benefit from that inclusion. This is giving us somewhere around 90 to 100 FPS, depending on the scene, it will change a bit. It'll go up with the foliage scene and drop a bit in the village scene toward the end. But our utilizations on both the graphics card and CPU side of things are fairly high. We're extracting a lot of potential out of both sides of this. And I think the playback, the experience is still very smooth. Again, for the kind of hardware that we're using here, not much to really complain about. And I'd like to note that if we had stuck with the original 16 gigs the system came with, it still would have been plenty for at least these games we've showcased here. I'd also like to point out that while those games are running, this graphics card doesn't get very hot at all. I mean, you can't even hear it practically. It's it's impressive how quiet it is given how close this card is to our power supply, which yes, I know is cringy. Another reason why it shouldn't build this. That's not bad, right? Performance wise for a system that you could practically hold with one hand and toss around a bit. I mean, it's, it's super compact given that this is an older rig, older platform an older OEM with an optical drive. This was actually pretty fun to put together. Again, it doesn't make any financial sense at all to build, but if you just want like a, a sort of sleeper rig with some questionable compromises, including a poorly placed 16 lane PCI slot, be my guest. And I think our card sags a bit because the slot that it's connected to isn't actually a, again, a full length slot. So it's just kind of hanging on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> which is a little worrisome because it's already pretty close to this power supply and it's not actually mechanically fastened, well, with screws at least. So it's got this little like 
locking mechanism here, which would normally be fine for smaller expandable cards, but for this beefier slim graphics card, it's uh, maybe just a bit too heavy for that. All in all, I'm fairly impressed. I thought the card would perform way worse than it did running on four PCIe lanes. The, the 4060 is a pretty impressive card. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head. Raymond's gonna have to fact check me on this, so check text somewhere, he'll pop it up when I say what I'm about to say. I believe the RTX 4060 runs natively on eight PCIe lanes. I might be wrong about that, but if it does, then that could explain while dropping from eight to four doesn't necessarily trash performance in like the, the conventional way you might expect it to. The RAM was totally fine to begin with. Upgrading that was just because why not? The fact that we could put an M.2 in here was pretty cool as well. That allowed us to make the system a bit snappier. And uh, well, the power supply is, it is what it is. It's just there. You have to deal with it. The proprietary connectors, the proprietary shape, um, the motherboard shape, you have to work around that stuff. But if you want a challenge, if you want to just fiddle with something that really has no business existing in the first place. I think this is a great candidate. I'm gonna have some of the stuff linked below, including the M.2, the 4060 we use. This is a fairly versatile card. It's so tiny, you could put it basically anywhere, and for its size, it packs a heck of a punch. If you have not subscribed already, get subscribed. Check out relevant links, like we said, in the video description, and uh, stick around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building with me.